So what's up guys? For today's video is going to be a simple one. Today we're going to learn how to draw matte objects. We already did a little bit of shiny plastics. We did a little bit of chrome. We're keeping it simple with the shapes. So today's shape is going to be just a simple cube. So it's going to be a, a, my GoPro camera, which is just like a simple black object that is has a matte finish to it. And remember that the important thing is not what we're drawing, but just like the materials and how to represent them. So I know everybody wants to draw cars, but this is the way to get there. So let's draw this, uh, keep an eye on it, follow it. You can fast forward if it gets too slow for you. And I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay guys, so I got the line drawing done for you. You can download it from my website, just go on the link below and you can find it and download it. So that way you can focus on practicing your markers and your rendering skills and not so and don't spend so much time to get the line drawing right. It's important that you learn both, but for this exercise, I'm more interested in you and understanding how to control the lights and how to control the markers to make something look matte black. So let's get started. I have said before, I recommend that you build slowly. So if you're gonna make something like matte black, start with like, I'm just gonna use the gray tones, so one to 10. I would say like start with the three and then the five and seven and nine and build it up until you get to 10, which is black. With experience, you know how dark you should start to get to that color. But when you're starting to learn, I don't care if you start with the number one, which is like a 10% black. It's pretty much super light gray. Start with that and then build slowly and slowly and slowly until you get to the color that you want. Remember, you can always build it, you can never go back. So let's get started. For me, I already have an idea of what I want, so I'm gonna start a little darker for this one, just so the video doesn't take that long. So I'm gonna start with the front side of my, um, of my camera with a number five. Notice how I'm, I can like hit my lines constantly and that just comes with practice of staying in the line and using your entire arm to do the strokes. Instead of like uh, using your wrist that gives you like not really good lines, I use my entire arm and that's why I mounted my table on a, on a thing that can pivot so I can get comfortable to where my line, my arm follows more naturally to that line. I can hit those lines a lot better. So I'm starting with a number five. I know I'm gonna go a little darker than that. But like I said, to start with, I'm gonna start with something that I can always go a little darker if I need to. I'm gonna leave this cubes right here. It's just a detail from the camera. So I'm gonna just outline them first so I don't have to be worrying about going over them. Right, and then I'm just gonna fill up this entire part and then I'm gonna have just a little bit of bounce light coming from the ground because this camera has like a rounded edges so by having the rounded edges it means that the bottom has a kind of like a half cylinder that light bounces from the ground up into the camera so I know that this bottom edge should be lighter Also, I know that this camera, even though it's like a perfect cube, it has with the round edges, I have to know where my surfaces stop and where that round starts. And I'll show you that on a later videos with like digital models on how you build surfaces where you have two square edges and then you add a round to just like soften that edge. And this is what this camera has a lot of. So on the, on the template, I actually put this like really thin line for you to understand where that surface ends and where the radius begins. And by having that radius, you're gonna be able to control how the light changes from the front surface to the top surface. And you can see all my marker strokes, but the more I soak it, those are gonna start to disappear. And then when I go darker, you won't even see those. It will look like a solid, perfect 
colored in shade. I'm just gonna color this whole thing in. Make sure I don't hit those squares. I want them to be kind of like whitish and then don't hit my light bouncing on the bottom of the camera. So that's just the front side and uh, I just use the number five. Then I know from the right side, the light is gonna be, the light is coming kind of like from the front. So this side is gonna be my darkest, this is gonna be lighter and this is gonna be medium. So this is gonna be my darkest side. So with this one, I started with the five, now I'm gonna go with the seven and do this side. And it's very important to understand that the difference when something is like a matte color, matte, matte colors tend to have very change of tone. So if I have something shiny, I will have like a perfect white and I will have a perfect black. But if I have something matte like my t-shirt, I might have like a number four gray and then I'll have like a number eight and nine, but everything will be very subtle transitions and, and it will jump from eight to six to five. It will never be eight and four. It, that change of contrast makes things shiny. So this won't have a lot of change of contrast. This marker is starting to dry. I might need a new seven for this. And you can see how my strokes, how, um, on the strokes, it, it's starting to look like a dead gray. So this mark is a little dry. Let's start with a new one, new number seven. And then I know that on the camera, there's this line right here that has like a shiny plastic to it. So for now, I'm gonna leave it alone. So then later I can come back and make it shiny. Then again, I have my radius over here. I'm gonna leave that radius alone. That is, I think right there, that's the speaker. And then I'm gonna leave this line alone. And then I'm gonna try to save that number seven right there, which is just the, the number seven on the GoPro, which is the Hero 7. Now I know that there's a change of surface right there, so I'm gonna have to leave that white right there. And then again in here, because of the roundness, I can go back with the number five and just add a little bit of bounce light to the bottom of that camera. And then I'll grab my number three in here just to mark right now the change of, the change of surface where it catches a little bit of light and then I'll darken it later. Same thing here with my roundness, I'm gonna go with the number three and soften that radius off. So you can see how it started to get round. And then I'm gonna go again with my five. On the seven side, I'm gonna go with the five and try to soften that radius a little more. So I get like that smooth transition. And then I'm gonna kill that brightness with my one because I don't want the white to be there. The white makes it look bright. And this is a matte camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually kill that white color behind it. I'm gonna continue to fill up this with the seven. And then I know this seven is white, but I'm not gonna let it be white just because I need white for it to be my highlight. So I'm just gonna actually put a little bit of tone on my white, sorry, on, on the camera, on the white graphics. Do not leave them white. I want them to have a little bit of 
tone to them. So then when I want to make something shiny, when I add white, is the whitest part of the entire drawing. So now I'm going to go with the top of the camera, which will be, if the light is coming from the top, then this will be my lightest color. So I'll start with a three and I'm going to leave that radius alone. If you see this radius and I'll show you how to make it round later. This marker is a little dry as well. So again, I'm going to leave that radius. You see this radius? I'm going to leave it white for now. And I'll, I'm going to come back later and actually fill it in. Now this part under this button, it's, the surface sticks out a little bit. So I'm going to leave it white for now and then later I'm going to come back and actually, depending on where the light is coming from, I'm going to adjust the tone to it. See this marker starting to dry again. I've been doing a lot of drawings lately, so I guess all my markers are starting to dry. But don't be afraid to soak it up. Let that color really get absorbed on the paper so you get like a very smooth color through the entire surface and you can't see all the marker strokes. So now if I want to make this round, the roundness is a transition of color. It's not like if you have an edge that is like 90 degrees, the different in color from this side to this side with the light will be huge. But when it's round, then there has to be a transition of the color of the shading on it. So with this one, if this was a seven, I'm going to put a little bit of five. to Start to soften that up. And then I'm going to put three. And then I'm going to put one. And on the top side, which was already a three, I'm going to start with the one. And then blend it a little bit with the three, which is the same as the top, but I'm going to go faster and faster to have that line kind of like erase a little bit. And same here, right? This is the front side. So this was a five. So the first thing I'm going to do is the three. And then I'm going to go ahead and with the one, I'm going to kill that brightness because again, this is not a bright material. This is a, a matte material. So if I kill that edge, it's still going to read like it's a, it's bending, but it's not going to be super shiny. Then we have that screen which I'm gonna use my warm number one, just to give it a different gray. And like I uh, explained on all of my videos, which I still am going to do dedicate one video to this, but nothing stays one even tone the entire way. So you have to play, the more you change the tones of stuff, the more realistic it's going to start to look. So right now this is like my number th two on the top, going into a one, and then I can add a little bit of three at the top, and I'm using the warm ones. And the reason for that is just to to just simulate how the light is hitting it in different angles and how like that color is going to transition from where it's closer to the light to from where it's farther away from the light. So from this scenario, the light is bouncing from the ground into that like that screen and that's what makes it what makes it a little lighter. So now this surface and this surface are facing the same way. So I'm going to go with my number three and lighten that surface up. And then this surface and this surface are facing the same way. So I'm going to go with my seven. Lighten up. With this radius, I'm going to actually kill it a little bit with the one. And then if I need to, I'm going to go make it darker later. Here. sure all those marker strokes go away and if you see once I go back once it dried up 
if I go again with a 5, there's going to be a change of tone, even though it's the same color as I used before. And that's going to help me do like some kind of transition of color. Alright, so now we have this line which is like a brighter plastic. So that one ha can have a little contrast and change of color. So I'm gonna go with my actual black over here. And then I'm gonna go with my, maybe the five used to start with. And I wasn't too worried about going over the lines because I knew I was gonna play with tones on it and it's not gonna be a light color. So it's okay if I went over the lines because I was gonna go darker over it anyway. And then same thing here, in between these two lines, we go with the five. This is like a shinier plastic. So it's gonna have more contrast. And then I'm gonna go with the three, just so it has like some color transitions. And I can leave even like a little bit of white right there, which just shows that it's like a shiny plastic and not like a matte plastic. Now we have a number three surface here. This surface is facing this way. This surface is facing the same way, but it's actually facing up a little bit. Darker than this side because it's, sorry, it's gonna be darker because it's facing this way, but at the same time it's facing up. So it has to be like an in-between between that one and that one. So I'm gonna start with the number five on that side. Then on the front side, I'm going to use the number three, which is probably the same as the last one. So, and then I'll have to make it darker with more passes. And then the top button, and be this surface and that surface are the same. And then this whole button is the same tone as that one. So let's go ahead and fill it on. Fill it in, fill it in, fill it in. And then that button is actually red. So I'm gonna start with the pink. Then I'll go with the red towards the front side of it. Okay, so now we have this button, which is a surface that is facing the same direction as this, and it's actually the same tone. So I'm just gonna go back with the seven. Fill it in. So this edge is behind the glass and it's a lot darker than the other option part of the camera. So with this one, I'm gonna do a color transition where I'm gonna have a little bit of five. Then I have a seven. This is my dry seven, so I need to throw that away. and then I'm gonna go nine on the bottom. So, uh, so it's almost like black, 90% black.
then on that bottom part, I'm gonna go ahead and actually use 100% black, so pure black. This surface and this surface are the same, but it's inside, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill that up with a five. So this is a flat surface, which is exactly the same surface as the front side surface. So it should be the same light to it. Okay, so I think after this, we have this surface, which is slightly at an angle. So I'll start with a three, right on the bottom, and it'll get darker as it goes higher. That was a five, then we'll go to the seven. That looks like the same surface as, as the other one, so I'll, this looks like the same surface as that one, so I'm just gonna go back to the five. And I'm not worried too much about going into that line again because I think that's just black. So I'm gonna go back with the black and just go over it at the end. This might have a little bit of an angle outwards as well. So I'm gonna go three. Again, also kind of three here on the top. And then transition into a five. I'll just keep going five all the way. And then this is kind of like, almost like a hole. So I'm just gonna put it kind of dark on the top with a seven. And I'm gonna go ahead with a nine to get like that transition. And then I'm gonna go with pure black. And I said this edge was gonna be black, so I'm just gonna go black all, all the way around it. That's gonna clean up a lot. And you can always come back and clean that, those up with pencil. So don't worry about getting it perfect with a marker. Marker is more like for fill, filling up a lot of color and then you can come up and clean it up. I'm gonna clean up this transition right here, which is kind of ugly. I'm gonna go back with my five. 
same thing here. So all this kind of becomes the lens now. So the lens, I'm gonna treat it as one big surface. And I'm gonna do like a core, almost like if I was working with a sphere. If you haven't seen the sphere, look at my previous video and I have how to work on a sphere. One at the top. And this is gonna be the only like shiny part on the camera. So I'm actually gonna have the contrast where you show white against like a darker color. And if you see the rest of the camera, won't have any white on it. And you have this lens over here. I'm gonna clean that line up. Just my number two to get a smoother transition. And I'll teach, I'll also have to do a video about how to work with glass because uh, that makes a huge difference of where the highlights are and what you can see behind the glass or in front of the glass. My seven to get more contrast, We're here at the core. bring my black and get super contrast to make this super shiny right where the glass is. Okay, so I'm going to clean up the edges a little bit. The transitions, get better transitions. So have some kind of color shift a little bit. Red light, I'm gonna start with the pink in the center. And then add red at the top and bottom to make it look shiny. And here you can have, I don't know, whatever shows up here, but. I'm gonna clean up also the tones on this side. I'm gonna leave that back side just slightly so you can see that light bouncing into that until the back side of the camera. And also to the bottom side of the camera. Well, see how I'm like flooding my marker to make sure that I have like the best tone transition. And this is where the speaker is, which is just the hole. So it's just gonna be black, nice and simple. Clean up my tones over here. Back with the five. Go darker here. three, kill some of those edges. And then I'm using the three on this five side just to get like a little lighter, on darker on this side, lighter on this side. So a lot of straight edges. 
so I'm going to use a ruler because it's a pretty fair and simple straight edges. So I'm going to find all the edges that are kind of like facing up and just highlight them a little bit. And I know also this has some kind of a round transition to it. So I'm going to try to round this off a little bit. Like I explained on the other video, nothing is constantly perfect one color. So when I put the white lines and the highlights, I'm gonna try to change the tension from it. So it's gonna be like super bright white on one edge and then not as bright on the other. And I'm gonna help that later with, um, with my jelly pen so it can get like a lot wider than the Prismacolor. Now this black plastic edge this is like a shiny plastic, so I can push the white compared to here and here because it's like a shiny edge. So what I did is I just put my more pressure on my pencil to get that to look wider than the, the other part. For example, this is the edge of the glass. So I know that's going to be super crisp and shiny here and here. So I'm really going to go at it with it. here right because I know there's other edges which are like this one which is just I'm actually not even gonna use my Prismacolor I'm gonna use my Baritin because it just leaves leaves like less material so it's not as white because this is a cut line in the dark plastic so it should be just nice and soft to it so if you see the difference from that line to that line it's huge this one's a lot more subtle and gentle one I can apply a little more pressure because it's the very thin and it's not gonna leave as much ink well not ink but as much material pencil now there's some kind of hole on top of the camera so let's darken that part right there and highlight the edge so you can hear this is the hole for the speaker so it has a little bit of catching right there and then a little bit of a highlight here same as this guy right here this is a button so we're going to catch the light right there and then this is an edge we can put here and, here and what I can do to highlight this edge a little bit is just give it a little bit of light here and a little bit of light at the bottom Slight, slight thin edge at the top. And right now they look a little too even, so I'm gonna adjust that as well. So I don't want them to look perfectly even all around. Like I said, if you want something to look more realistic, it has to have like multiple changes of tone to it. So here we have a little bit of a highlight here, but this is actually a glass, so. Again, we're gonna bring that. I even broke my pencil because of the difference of pressure that I put to this. This light right here has an edge. And then the light is bright, so I can put a little bit of white. Um, I'm gonna keep rounding off this edge by making like a soft transition to make sure that it looks almost like it's a little rounded and not just like a square edge. my ruler to help me out but I'm gonna put very little pressure there's a slight cut in the back so we're gonna add that and all this is gonna make your drawing just look more realistic the more you add detail to it it makes all the difference in the world and I'm gonna bring out my ellipse guides 
to highlight some of the edges on the on the bottom of the circles. This highlight is going to be highlight is going to be on the top edge. Of the outside of that rim. And then the other highlight is going to be on the inside of it. Because that's the bottom side that is actually catching the light. So that would be Here, and then I'm gonna soften that transition. And I'm gonna clean up this edges with my black pencil. Then I think I'm gonna go darker inside here just because it looks a little messy. So let's go with the seven. So I'm gonna put a shadow just to ground this better. So since the front edge is round, it's gonna have a slight shadow underneath. Right, and then we can just throw that backwards, and then that line is gonna follow this line right here to the vanishing point. my number two warm again I'm, I'm using the warm tone just because the whole sketch was done with the uh, cool grays so if I put a cool gray shadow you might be get confused with the subject with the product so if I put a shadow that is in a different marker tone it's easier for the viewer to realize that's not part of the product and that's kind of like a shadow or whatever extra it is in there that is not part of the product some of that color into the bottom of the camera which will make it look a little more realistic and then I'm just gonna keep darkening my shadow so I started with the three I'm gonna go with the five which is drying on me and then from here I go back to my Cool five because it's gonna get dark enough where you won't tell the difference. Seven. Nine, which is drying as well. I'm just gonna start getting rid of all my dry markers. Well, that's two in a row that I get on the trash can. Okay, so nine. And then finally, black. That's it, and then a lot of product designers love to add like some kind of background to it just to punch the product out a little bit more. So for that, you can uh,
you kind of want to make sure that your background doesn't align with any of your lines on the sketch because it might be confusing. So if I have put that bottom part this way, it'll get confused with the rest of the sketch. So I wanted to like support the sketch, but not distract from it. So with this one, I'm just going to go with a blue. And since this is a very dark material, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put some of the blue over the camera and it's gonna give this effect that it's actually kind of like reflecting a little bit of the blue on the background. But since this is not a reflective material, it's just gonna slightly show a little bit of blue, but not too much. I'm gonna go with my edges. And then just soak it up. And then I'm gonna use a different blue, just a slightly darker or something. And this is just to create create some dynamic and not have like a boring, simple background. And sometimes in the background, it's okay if you wanna show marker strokes, just to add some texture to it. Either way, that's just a preference. It could just be perfectly solid or you can have a little bit of texture to it doesn't really matter it's just the background and last but not least highlights and highlights are super important so highlights go like on edges and sharp and then like this i said this is not like a super shiny material so there's going to be highlights where the shiny plastic is but everything else will be very subtle Highlights, there's gonna be big highlights on the camera. Just because there's like shiny plastic and materials, but the rest of it is kind of like, you cannot put too much shine to it because it's not a shiny material. So it's not gonna have a lot of light bouncing off it. The camera, the glass, the glass wheel, this edge. So with glass, sometimes it actually, the light is so shiny that it blocks whatever is behind it. So even though you put a lot of detail and stuff into the object, sometimes if you want to indicate glass, you need to have a reflection that kind of kills that. And you'll see what I mean. So with this, I'm gonna actually go super white. just on my glass. And this is just, it's reflecting something random somewhere. Here, and maybe this one as well. I left my wash open, so it's kind of dry. So that's how you work with matte materials. Uh, you saw I stayed on the high scale of the gray scale. So five, seven, nine, ten. I didn't go like one, two, three, just because those are too light and I want it to be a dark product. It's a simple shape with a little bit of rounds to it. So you get used to like transitions between one surface to the other. But I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something and I'll see you guys next week. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this wasn't too slow. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys want to make them videos faster like the previous ones. You like some full tutorials. I'm going to do a little bit of both mix and match. Some, some will be like 10 minutes, some will be like 40 minutes. And uh, comments below with any questions, any suggestions. And I'll see you guys next week. And thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. Take care. Bye.